happen? Did you notice that it didn't finish? So, do you, don't you, Jonah, care that there is uh, more than 120,000 and many cattle? You know, the Lord loves not only the people, but he loves his animals as well. So, and, uh, and I'm worse than Jonah. That's why I learned, you know, how reluctant I am. The Lord loves me so much that more than once he has called me to go back. That's his mercy. God is a God of chances, not only first chances, second chances, and even three or four or more chances. How many chances have given you? How many chances have given me? The book of Jonah is a, a, a beautiful lesson for you and me. Let's just apply them in their lives. Happy Sabbath to everyone. Welcome to our second service. Thank you, uh, Sabbath School Department, for giving us a, a, a beautiful program. And uh, today, thank you. Today is uh, September 18, 20. 20,000, I'm sorry, 2021. Can you imagine? Yesterday, uh, here in BC, rain between, depending where you live and in the area here in the lower mainland, uh, between uh, 50 to 75 millimeters of rain. In a regular city, especially in our third world countries, we will be flooded. <laughs> Vancouver is designed to, uh, to handle that kind of rain because it rains uh, that much. And uh, uh, personally, I do walking after I work every day. And yesterday I was working and I did my walking. And, uh, and I got soaked. <laughs> but it's a, it's a beautiful experience. <laughs> so so because uh, I got soaked because it was windy. So uh, not because I didn't have, and I had to fight the, the wind as well with the, with the umbrella. But we enjoy, we enjoy the, the weather here in Vancouver. So uh, yes, on behalf of the Vancouver Filipino uh, Elders Department, we are happy to have you here in our second service. and. Uh, um, we are welcoming every one of you here that they are present physically, but especially to those ones that they are watching us uh, in your uh, uh, electronic devices, wherever you are here in the Lower Mainland or worldwide. We are uh, on Facebook Live and uh, we are located here at um, uh, Mainland 15 on uh, beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. So, and uh, Today, this Sabbath day, the Lord has many blessings for you and me. Uh, so welcome. Uh, if you are at home, sit, relax, and uh, 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 pay attention to the blessings that the Lord has prepared for you and me this Sabbath. And to those ones that they are uh, present with me here, uh, for sure, the Lord is going to fulfill his promise. He is with us here. And uh, yeah, he, he has many blessings for you and me. Again, enjoy the Sabbath. Welcome to our second service. We want to uh, read some names here. We are blessed with the presence of some uh, uh, brethren that they are visiting us here. And, uh, and they have the courage to come and join us here in, in our sanctuary. So, and uh, we want to give a special welcome uh, to, uh, we, we uh, bring, I personally have been praying for this person because I didn't see him for the last two weeks. My, my, for the last two years, practically two years, I'm sorry. My, my brother Florence, welcome back to our uh, church so we've been praying for you or so so and uh, uh, we hope that you have good time in this time of <laughs> the pandemic situation here in vancouver and uh, 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 yes so uh, welcome to our second service welcome to our church again uh, we want to give a special welcome as well to a beautiful family i'm referring to sister mariam to uh, sister agape to our, uh, our beautiful grandma Agdas and uh, to our brother 
uh, Chanas, I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce properly. <laughs> Can you please stand up and, and let's give a hand to, to them. Uh, my, my mom asked us you to have to, see, to stand up. It's okay, you can stay like that. Welcome, welcome to our second service. It's a beautiful uh, blessing for us to, to have you here, okay? You may have a seat. And uh, we wanna, and by the way, you may have a seat, yeah. Uh, uh, our beautiful uh, family, they are visiting us from here, from Vancouver. We wanna give a welcome as well to sis, uh, to Vanessa Solid from California. Uh, Vanessa Solid, oh, you may stand up, thank you. Welcome, welcome to our service. And, uh, where is Pastor John Masigan? It says, Pastor Masigan? Where is Pastor? Oh, Pastor John Masigan is in the corner there. I didn't recognize you. <laughs> where is the family? Where, 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 where? It's right here. My wife is not here. Your wife is not here. Okay. Wow. The last time that I saw Pastor John Masigan, he was in Michigan. So, and uh, he's been there for a year or so. John? Yeah, here since COVID, we haven't been in Michigan. Oh, since COVID? You've been here in Canada? Since, since Back and forth, yeah. Back and forth, eh? Oh, okay. How's the family? They're good. They're big. They're big. <laughs> Perfect. Praise the Lord. So praise the Lord. Well, uh, so welcome to Vancouver. For those ones that they don't know, Pastor John, he is one of our children here in, in, in uh, that he grew up with us here in Vancouver, Filipino. So we saw him since small and now he's in the ministry serving his Lord. Praise the Lord for that. So, and uh, we are happy to, to uh, have everyone here. I have some other announcements. Please give me a couple of more uh, minutes here. For our own health and safety, please. We are a very social church for sure. But uh, this, this virus, I say many times, is an antisocial virus, okay? So, <laughs> and please uh, refrain for just for, a, for f I hope, a few more months. Uh, no handshake, but you can give a fist or, or a, a, a elbow uh, shake. And uh, yeah, no hugs. <laughs> and so, and uh, uh, no handshakes. And uh, we cannot implement. The, our, our potluck yet too. So, and we want to have it, you know, but uh, we must follow the uh, Provincial Health Authority uh, guidelines. So, and uh, after the sermon, you are free to go as a family and share your meal at home or so, wherever you wanna go, but we cannot have potluck yet here in our basement. And uh, after church service, uh, yeah, we are advised to uh, to do their uh, further conversations outside of the church. This is part of the antisocial thing, I'm telling you. So, and uh, in order to avoid, uh, yeah, um, we, please wear your mask uh, all the time. So, and, um, and maintain social distancing. The church has at least three exits. We are, uh, this is only for emergency, but there is at the front and, and, and in the basement is a uh, uh, exit as well. And as per church board decision, we will continue our Sabbath says services with two groups. You are seeing only, this is the group number one. Next Sabbath is coming the group number two. So uh, we have to split the church in two groups. And, and look at how is the church now. <laughs> we are, I think, uh, more 60, 60 to 75% full. Uh, so, and that is because the, the second group is not here. So, and uh, the Lord is good and the Lord has blessed us with many of you here. So our church is looking for a youth pastor. So, you know, we are still open to receive some, we receive a, at least two, two uh, applications. And, uh, and the youth uh, department is studying the characteristics of some of the pastors. And uh, we don't have any, any uh, youth pastor, but we are in the process of hiring uh, one or so, so and uh, but if you still know somebody that it will be uh, what is uh, able to work here, it has to be people that they are here in Canada. I know that there are excellent pastors there in the Philippines or outside, but they must be here because the, our church. I'm talking about the administration is very difficult for the immigration process or so. So uh, the church has advice uh, uh, to everybody. 
if you want to hire somebody, it has to be, uh, doesn't matter what race or so, but it has to be here in Canada as well. Okay, so of course for us, it will be probably a Filipino will be, uh, it will be good or so, and we are in that process. And um, there, there will be a virtual uh, evangelism series on October, from October 9 to October 23. There is a, a, a I think, a, yeah, um, you will receive one of the pamphlets or so. Our main preacher, by the way, this one is uh, uh, being organized by Bornabe Filipino Can, uh, Canadian SDA Church, you know, and uh, the main speaker will be Pastor uh, Abel Cordero, and, and the, uh, mostly it will be, it's about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes every meeting. So it will be 11 nights starting at 7.30 every night, and the theme is being on the Lord's side. It's beautiful, beautiful theme. And uh, this is not only for you and me, we have to invite our neighbors or so, and bring them inside our homes or so, you know, and, and uh, uh, prepare a little refreshment or so for them or so, and they can listen, uh, invite them. So, and at the back of the pamphlet, there is every single night, uh, what is the issue that doctor uh, uh, Pastor Cordero is going to, to uh, talk in that night. And he said the Zoom ID is there and everything, all the information that you and me we need is there in the pamphlet. And um, another thing, our tithes and offerings, uh, you can give. We encourage to everyone give online, the online giving. It's a very easy process. But still, if you, want, you are like me, that you want to give a check or so, you are welcome to do so. The, and the box here at the front and offerings as well is uh, is here in the right time we're gonna give a, a time and we will ask to come one by one to deposit it here at the front so you can bring your tithes you can bring your offerings to the Lord and uh, that is part of the blessing that he has okay I don't know if I miss any any other uh, see and now it's time to sing to our Lord. That's what you and me are here for. Okay? We came to worship our Lord. And uh, uh, let's sing praises to Him that He deserves everything on, uh, for, from us. So uh, I'll invite the praise team to come here at the front. And, uh, and I will invite everyone, not only here, but there at home, sing with us. Let's sing praises to our Lord. Welcome everyone, and I will invite to our preacher and our uh, uh, part of the, uh, uh, the team here at the front to meet me there at the back of the, of, the, of the church. Again, happy Sabbath to everyone. Welcome to our second service. Let's sing praises to our Lord. Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Uh, before we start our inspiration, let us bow down our heads for a word of prayer. Okay. Um, Father in heaven, we would like to um, thank you for gathering us today in the Sabbath day. Uh, we guide us and bless us and, um, as we sing praises to your name. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. For our first song, let us open our hymnals to hymn number 100, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
When shall we all sing Draw Me Near? song let us all stand and sing O oh, worship the lord hymn number six The 
those who are able, please kneel down and you will sing our intro. It. Our most gracious and kind Heavenly Father, this moment we come to you with praise and adoration for the things that you have done for us, for your Son who died on the cross to save us from our sins. And as we worship you and in spirit and in truth, we invite your presence to be with us. May the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom that everything that we will do will be for your glory and in accordance with your will. Let each one, Lord, focus on you while we are contemplating of, on your words today. Forgive us of all our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. This is the time that uh, you and me, and normally in the church, invite uh, everyone to come at the front. We, sorry, we will, I, I, I will ask you with all my heart to stay in your place, and if you have a special 
petition to the Lord, and uh, he knows. In the, in the garden of prayer that we have every single day, we have the least, please remember them too. And, uh, but this morning, I'm asking you personally, if you have any specific request to the Lord, this is your time. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna kneel down and, uh, uh, and open our heart to our Lord. He listened to our prayers. Many of us, we have many prayers answers. Believe me that the Lord is going to answer yours today. This is a special day, and the Lord has something special for you. So, uh, yes, because of the COVID thing, uh, stay, stay in your place. And uh, my brother, our brother, Richard on you, is going to bring us up to heaven and, and pray. Uh, so let's kneel down, let's sing our song, and then... Uh, we're going to pray. Now, dear Lord, Heavenly Father in heaven, we thank you for the Sabbath day. Only you deserve glory and honor and our worship. There is so much worship going on and it's, it is not being directed towards you. So Lord, give us a greater understanding, discernment, and a greater faith. Help us to direct our worship to you and you alone. Lord, Please be with us all that are here and those who are watching online. We are coming together and bringing to you the petitions in our prayer room, Bring, bringing you the praises and the thanksgiving, realizing the favor and acknowledging the blessings you have brought in our lives. We also bring to you the spoken and unspoken request, those who are needing healing recovery and comfort those who are needing guidance some have special petitions for finances that are causing mental distresses mm -hmm. relieve us lord and assure us that you are able to provide for all our needs lord please bless also those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries Amen. this week May you continue to bestow upon them blessings that they may grow into the best person or couples you want them to be. We also pray, Lord, for the blessings of forgiveness of all our sins and help us to be right with you. Bless also our speaker today, Brother Edmund Subadi. May his words be your words and help us to receive the message of truth. And may we be faithful to obey. I pray all this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen.
This is the time for the tithes and offerings. And I uh, uh, just want to read something here. The offerings are for our uh, local church budget this uh, Sabbath. So, and, uh, uh, so everything that is an offering will stay uh, here in the church. Even amid pandemic or so, the bills continue to come. So, so and you and me uh, faithfully sustain this church that we love, we love it so much. One day, a fisherman was fishing on the edge of a lake when a, a gray herring landed next to him. The bird looked into his bucket and saw a feast. When the bird tried to take one fish from the bucket, the fisherman tapped him with the end of his roll and made a deal with him. And he told him, every other fish I will give to you on the condition that you don't steal. The fisherman named the bird Henry. So the fisherman caught a fish and tossed it to Henry. The next catch went into the bucket. Henry waited for his turn. In an hour, he must have been at least 10 or 12, or 12 fish. Then he flew away. And each time the fisherman returned to the, to the lake, Henry would fly and land next to him. So the fisherman didn't have financial resources to give to the local church budget, but he wanted to contribute to the ministries of the church. He donated the fish in the bucket to the new immigrant people who were attending his church. The fisherman questioned if this ministry was a way of working for God since he had limited resources. Henry was God's answer to him. In the Bible, God uses animals to touch our lives. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and, have, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. You remember these words to whom were? You were to Prophet Elijah, yes. First Kings 17, 4. Giving can also come in many forms, times, talents, or tender. Let's bring uh, offerings to the Lord. And as uh, we are doing it uh, amid this pandemic, we will invite to bring your tithes and offerings here at the front. Please make it one by one and keep social distance. So don't come all together. And uh, uh, yes, uh, let's, uh, let's bring the tithes and offerings to the Lord. Scripture reading will be uh, taken from um, Philippians 2, 5 to 8. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, 
did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of man. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. Our preacher for this morning is one of our elders in our church. Brother Elder, uh, sorry, Brother Edmund Subade uh, has been uh, serving the Lord for many years and in the ministry of uh, eldership for many years as well. So, Brother uh, Ed Subade is married to Sister Rachel and they have uh, two grown children already, Kirsten and Matthew, and they are not here for us because they are busy in their ministry some, somewhere else and, uh, and uh, for sure praising the Lord. And the Subades, they used to live with us here and because of a uh, uh, constraint of work or so related, they went to to the very far north corner of British Columbia. This province is a very, very huge province and they went up to Fort Nelson for four and a half years. And, uh, uh, and after four and a half years, praise the Lord, they decided to come back. So <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and it has been, I think, almost four and a half years back, back brother, eh? so, so something like that from, uh, from Fort Nelson. And uh, um, presently, about two years or so ago, uh, Deer Lake School, our beloved academy here in, in, in Burnaby, uh, hired him as a custodian of the school. So, so Brother Ed is a full-time worker uh, serving uh, in the ministry of taking care of our school and taking care, especially with all the COVID things or so, he's one of the, that is a, a quite, uh, uh, what is specific and all the guidelines or so. But this morning, he is bringing the word of the Lord. And uh, I will ask you a special prayer for him while he will be speaking here at the front because he has a special, a special beautiful message for you and me that uh, the Lord is going to bless us this morning. And, uh, but before Brother Ed comes here, and we're going to give all our attention uh, to him, by the way, the name of the, the, his sermon is The Spirit of Christ. That is the, the, the sermon's title this morning. I want to invite my brother uh, Melchor Calaramo to come here at the front. And uh, uh, he has a special song to praise our Lord. So let's listen to the message in song. And after Brother uh, Melchor Calaramo's song, we're going to have our sermon for this morning.
with the electronics, we cannot predict things. So let's be patient. And, uh, uh, and we have something special before Brother Ed comes as well. He's so uh, with the electronics, we cannot predict things. So let's be patient. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brother. <coughs> Take three. <laughs> the on the sun, we set the world in motion. We feel the deepest ocean. Starry skies came as man to share our mortal weakness, to make himself in meekness his creation sacrifice. She was love beyond. such as I might
Before uh, Brother Ed has the word of God for us today, we want to uh, uh, let the children have their sermon first. So kids, don't, I want to invite you to come at the front. Stay with mommy and daddy there, and we have a children's story for each one of you. And after the children's story will be the story for everyone else through Brother Ed Sobade. For everyone else through Brother Esobade. The Miracle of Mercy, the Good Samaritan. This is Jesus, <laughs> who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. You see, when Jesus was on earth, he wanted everyone to know what God thought about things. So he took every opportunity to teach people about God's heart. <clears throat> One day, a religious expert stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? <laughs> what does the law say? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> right. All right. Do this and you will live. Wait. The man then asked, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. <laughs> They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. <laughs> By chance, a priest came along. <laughs> but when he saw the man lying there, uh, yuck. he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. La 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 la, la 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 la, la 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 la, whoa! Another man who worked in the temple who was called a Levite walked over and looked at him lying there. He's out. Uh, huh? But he also passed by on the other side. Then a Samaritan came along. Uh. Samaritans were hated by Jews. They were seen as lesser people and Jews would not interact with them. But when the Samaritan saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn, where he took care of him. One room, please. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, The one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, Yes, now go and do the same. The Miracle of Mercy, The Good Samaritan. and thanksgiving that I would like to welcome each one of you to this church and also to the study of God's Word. May the love of God and peace will prevail while we are studying the Word of God. There was a small problem in our uh, technical problem, but I would like to share with you a little bit on 
Uh, the reason why we have that, it's because every time there is an important message that God wants us to hear, the enemy of God is really working hard. Did you realize that? It's the mind of everyone, of the Christians that worship God. And every time we, we have a gathering, there will be some problem, like in our sound system. And uh, we understand that we have an invisible enemy that is working. If you remember, I delivered a message last year, and that was about, um, it's about the coming of Christ. Prepare you to meet God, to prepare you to meet the Lord. And if you're going to review that in the internet, in the Facebook, the recorded version is gone. The enemy doesn't want us to hear the message all over again. Because such an important message, like uh, the coming of Christ, it is, it is a reason for many people that they will come close to God. And our message today is considered as one of the grandest passages in the entire Bible. And I am surprised that um, this was mentioned in our Sabbath school. It's God's, God's leading and it's God's, really, God's will that we will be hearing this message. I will expound a little bit on the verses. And uh, I hope that God, and I pray that uh, once we hear the message, it will touch our lives and we will come out of this church, never be the same again. Our message is centered on uh, the Philippians, the book of Philippians, but not actually the whole background of Philippians. But I will focus on chapter 2, the verses 5 to 8. A little bit of background of Philippi. It is a place, okay, this part of Macedonia. I think the Macedonia in our time is uh, the place of Greece. It is a cheap city during that time. And the Christians or the Philippians were faithful members of the church. If you remember uh, Lydia, the one who sells purple, right? Lydia in Acts chapter 16, they were the pioneers of this church. They were uh, uh, converted during a prayer and gathering in uh, a bank of river during a Sabbath day. And also the jailer who were converted when Paul and Silas were uh, imprisoned and God made a miracle. They were able to escape with the help of the angel of God who opened the, the uh, gates of the prison cell. And the jailer heard the message and they, he was converted together with the household members. And uh, this church was established and ordained actually um, by God, you can read that in Acts 16.9, when Paul specifically uh, was called by God to, uh, to go to this place and preach the message. However, Paul sensed the danger of spiritual rivalries or competitions inside the church and the doctrinal divisions. If you're going to read in verses 2 and 3, he was giving them uh, encouragement in order to, be, to continue in, in their growth as believers. His desire for the Philippians was that they would grow spiritually such that they would come to a point at which they would have habitual victory over sins and become blameless in relation to both God and humanity. 
Paul upheld the grace of, or power of Christ as the source of peace of mind and of the ability to live a blameless Christian life. I believe that this is how Jesus will help us continue the work of redemption that he has started in each one of us. I would like to invite you to open your Bible to the book of Philippians chapter 2. And we will have a, a short study. I don't know what time we're going to end. But there are a lot of truths that we can get from these verses. I believe that you, all, you have heard this message already or these verses. You have come across this. You have read. You have uh, uh, studied in the past. But like other food, uh, physical food, that we love to eat, we, we eat it all over again. We want to eat it all over again because we want it and, and it's not bad to, to eat again, right? The food, because that, that is uh, what I want. And, and uh, that you want and, and it will make you probably healthy and full. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, Verses 5 to 7, I'm going to use a method of dissection in order to get uh, the, the substance or the nutrients from these um, verses, which is considered as according to the uh, one references, references that I have uh, read. It's the grandest. Uh, passages in the entire Bible. Philippians 2.5 We start uh, with uh, verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 6. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Philippians 2.5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I would like to, uh, to allow me to, uh, I would like you to allow me to use word spirit in place of mind in order to describe the, uh, the example set by our Lord Jesus Christ. The word spirit is sometimes used or uh, interchangeably used with the word mind in the Bible, but there is a difference, right? Mind is more on intellectual and intelligence, but the spirit is more on the emotion side of our aspect. But uh, since uh, in the New American Standard Bible, if you try to read there, the same verse, here is what it says. Chapter 2, verse 5 of the New American Standard Bible, have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus. So, choose the attitude. So, therefore, the spirit that I'm talking about here is the attitude of Christ. The spirit, like when you say, spirit of Christmas, what kind of spirit you have? The spirit of cooperation, or that's what we are going to focus uh, upon. Not the spirit that lives, like the power or the special spirit that lives in us, the Holy Spirit. No, not, we are not referring to that. And uh, the spirit is a special latitude, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, or a frame of mind. Also, it is a mental disposition characterized by firmness and assertiveness. Verse 5 reveals to us the attitude of Jesus Christ, of sharing what 
uh, one has with another person. What one has with another person. It says there, let, uh, let the mind of Christ be in you. So when two things or two persons go together and combine together, how do you call that? Union, right? They unite. Therefore, the unit, spirit of unity that we can see in this verse is being displayed by our Lord Jesus Christ that we should have in our church. Paul, uh, in the preceding verses of chapter 2, um, he told or encouraged the members of Philippian church to be united in love and conform with one another and be of the same mind. If you read in the uh, earlier verses, like in 2 and 3, starting verse 5, Paul presents Christ, Jesus, as the reason why the Philippian church or the Philippian Christians should uphold the spirit of unity. Why we should uphold the spirit of unity? That is, they need to be one with Christ. We need to be one with Christ, right? We Christians. To have Christ's mind brings unity in Christ. To have the mind of Christ is to have unity with Him. In the New Living Translation, we read John 17, 21, that Jesus prayed, I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us, so that the world will believe you sent me. This is why Paul, in verse 3, expresses his joy to see um, that his brethren in Philippi to be like-minded, having the same love of one accord and of one mind, looking not every man on his own things, but by every man also on the things of others. Verse 6, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Have you come across this verse? Allowing this to be exact rendering of the passage, this verse that we have just read, it shows the equality of the Father and the Son. Did you realize, realize that? It shows the equality of the Father and the Son. For if Christ did not think it robbery to be equal with God, because it says there, didn't, didn't think robbery. If he didn't think robbery, to be equal with God, then it certainly was not robbery to be equal with God. Then equality with God was his by right. And to be equal with God, he did not have to take that which did not belong to him. He did not have to take that which uh, did not belong to him because he's anyway equal with God. That's why he didn't take it robbery. To have a clear understanding of this idea, let us read from Philippians 2.6 uh, from the New American Standard Bible. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. A different word comes out. Grasp means to size and hold firmly. Consider, you can use other word, count. He, did, he didn't count it. The equality with God. Something to be taken or hold firmly. We can see in this particular verse another spirit that Christ is displaying for us to learn. And that is the spirit of contentment. If you understand and know the plan and will of God for you, 
and what he has provided you, you will be contented. Is that right? Do you agree? We should be contented when we know our limitation. But we can strive to do better for God's glory, for his sake. There are two uh, quotations that I have come across in the past and still, uh, is still in my mind. Every time I, I uh, come across this word contentment, I use this. It says here, be contented with what you have, but never be contented with what you are. What you have is God's gift to you. And what you become is your gift to God. What is not, what we, we should ha be contented is the things that are given to us. But God gave us the power and gave us the ability to develop this in order that we can offer this as a gift to Him. What we become like if we attain success in our life, it's not bad. It is for the glory of God. And this kind of relationship with Christ is the divine perspective Paul wanted to communicate to the Philippians. That is what it says in the uh, early verses before the verse 5 that we are uh, studying right now. Let us continue on verse 6 and 7. The idea is that while Jesus having the form of God and had also equality of God, he did not count that position a thing to be grasped or held to. While he saw men going to destruction without hopes, he couldn't enjoy the glory of heaven without trying to save the fallen man. What spirit you can see here that is in Christ? He wants us to learn. He didn't stand, he, cannot, he could not stand uh, enjoying the glory of heaven, being the Son of God, okay, being uh, equal with God the Father, and see the man uh, fallen into sins. And so what did he do? Isn't it that he became man, he went to earth and lived with us he lived in then. This is the spirit of unselfishness. In other words, Jesus is displaying to us in this passage his spirit of unselfishness. He desired not simply his own welfare, but that of others. He found his highest joy in contributing to the joy of others. This, and this enables us to understand what Christ means when he says um, through the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, verse 21. Enter ye into the joy of the Lord. It means that the faithful servant will have the joy that Christ has, namely of seeing the happiness of souls who have been brought that happiness of his denial, self-denial. If we read further in verse 7, we read, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. That's in King James Version. In, in New International uh, New Stan uh, American Standard Bible, it says here, but emptied himself. Okay. No reputation, made himself no reputation. In the other version, it says, emptied himself by taking the form of a bond servant and being born in the likeness of man. The original word, uh, kino, kino o, I think, uh, um, if you use made of no reputation, the meaning is Jesus made himself empty in regards to reputation. But if you say emptiness, empty, emptiness in regards to a thing or value, 
That is to say, it's considered no value. That is what Jesus took when he went to earth, to our world, in order to leave us, to live with us, and to save us from our sins. What do you do when you leave your great privilege of being in a high position? Of great possession, honor, fame, and power. And go to the lowest level of society and live among its people. What do, you, what do we do when we do that? You sacrifice. In the name of God and in biblical uh, point of view, that is sacrifice. But in the world, secular world, maybe we can hear, you're crazy, you're God crazy. But in the eyes of God, you display sacrifice. This is the spirit of sacrifice and service, which our Lord Jesus Christ has shown us from the glory and grandeur of his heavenly home, he left and lived among the sinful men. He made himself of no value. As the song entitled, If That Isn't Love Goes, he left the splendor of heaven knowing his destiny was the lonely hill of Golgotha there to lay down his life for me. What a sacrifice, my dear brothers and sisters. And this sacrifice was driven by God's unconditional love, isn't it? Do you agree? Because of God's love, he didn't think of anything. He didn't think twice, but right away, he had a plan. In fact, before the foundation of the world, he had uh, designed a plan of salvation. And Christ took the form of a servant. This servant in the original doulos in Greek, and it is equivalent to bond servant. A bond servant that works without payment. Right? The bond servant is one who subservient to and entirely at the disposal of his master during the time. Under Roman law, a bond servant was considered the owner's personal property. Slaves essentially had no rights and could even be killed with impunity by their owners. But I like the, the other meaning of doulos. The disrespect of one's own interest to, to be devoted to another. Probably this is the closest. Why Christ took the servant, the form of a servant. He disregarded his own interest to devote uh, to devote to others. His, his uh, Attention, like us, sinners. The idea is that Jesus came to earth in order to serve and not to be served. Matthew 20, verse 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And how did Christ serve? He healed the sick. You know that. Utter words of comfort to the lonely and to the sad, to the depressed people, and many other things that he did. Miracles in order for them to feel happy and in order for them to have satisfaction. Christ made himself of no reputation. Christ took the form of a slave. He took on the essential attributes of a slave, rendering unquestioning obedience, so as a man, the son, undertook to render obedience to the father. Hebrews 5, verse 8. Let us continue with verse 8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Christ is showing us here the spirit of humility. He humbled himself. That is the spirit of humility 
And the Greek equivalent for that is he humbled the tapino, tapino, to make or bring low. From earth to heaven, from glory to sinful world, from splendor and honor to shame and despisement. Humility is often interpreted as weakness or cowardice, but Christian humility does not make one less energetic, less, less aspiring. It doesn't make, it make one or a Christian less aspiring or less efficient in his responsibilities. Because his mind is not on selfish ambition, the humble person will devote more thought and energy to the Lord's work. When Paul admonished the Philippian church in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, he told them, Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility consider one another as more important than yourselves. This is one way to display our humble spirit. To consider others more important than yourself, than ourselves. In other words, let us be honest with ourselves and recognize our own failures and mixed motives. And at the same time, recognize, recognizing others' capabilities and rights. Last verse or last part of verse 8. And Jesus, or, and he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. But spirit, we can see here of Christ that we should learn the spirit of obedience. Christ was obedient to the will of his Father. He said when he prayed at Gethsemane in Matthew 26, verse 39, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but the, as thou will. The cup of suffering, right? He's talking about the cup of suffering. He felt the physical uh, uh, feeling as a man. By the way, when he went to earth and became man, when you try to study the, the original word, he humbled and emptied himself. He didn't remove his divinity. I mean, he is 100% uh, divine and 100% man. That's what we believe, right? And as a man, he felt the intense uh, sacrifice that he's going to under, undergo. And so, he prayed the Father that if it is possible, let this cup of suffering pass from him. But because he was obedient to the Father's will, he said, not as I will, but as the will. In verse 42, similar uh, verse is, uh, can be read, O my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. If there's no other way that can be uh, exempted, from this suffering, and at the same time save humanity. He said, if it is possible, but if it is not possible, thy will be done. Except I drink it. There's no other way except that he will undergo the suffering and the death on the cross. Prophet Isaiah describes his obedience in Isaiah 53, verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as, as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. So he opened, not, he opened not his mouth. He didn't say anything. He didn't uh, say bad words. In Filipino, hindi siya nagmura o hindi siya. He didn't say after... Um, like uh, violent words, but he just kept his mouth shut because he understood the plan of, of the Father 
to him and and uh, he, his mission. He understood his mission, and that is to save mankind from the sinners from their sins. The challenge is before us this morning, my dear brothers and sisters. We're almost 30 minutes <laughs> we are on time. Christ's example was set and spirit was displayed. Are we going to accept to be like Jesus and follow his steps and display as well his spirit, his attitude, and became one with him in mind? in the spirit of unity, in the spirit of contentment, in the spirit of unselfishness, in the spirit of sacrifice and service, in the spirit of humility, and in the spirit of obedience. If you say yes, may I see your right hand? You agree? Thank you so much. And God will bless you. And may God will bless the words that we have studied today. And may it will propel our, our faith and our relationship with God that from, from here, from this time, we will not be the same again as we go and serve, continue to serve the Lord. This is my prayer. Five, six, seven, have thine own way, Lord, for our closing song. Let's all stand. Like the spirit of the song, have thine own way, we pray that you will take control of us. From now on, Lord, may you be our Lord and Master in our lives. May we be able to display the spirit of Christ so that uh, you will be glorified 
and you will be praised by men. And as we contemplate on the words that we have studied, may, we, may it always uh, bring us strong faith, will help us and guide us in our walk, daily walk with you. As we relate with other people, may we reflect your character and may they see in us the image of God. As we depart from this place, we pray, loving Father, that you will continue to bless us and may the Holy Spirit will always guide us and give us wisdom that everything we do will be for your glory in a, and in accordance with your will. Thank you so much for the message and thank you so much for accepting our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll ask you just one more minute. Have a seat for a moment, please. We praise our Lord for the beautiful message that Brother Subade brought us. And uh, let every one of us strive every day to have that spirit of Christ and show the, spirit, the fruits that the Spirit brings to each one of us and use it in our daily life to uh, increase the kingdom that the Lord has for you and me on this earth, and you and me are active part of that one. Uh, before we go, we want to uh, just one more announcement. Somebody here uh, uh, brought that offering uh, this morning in an envelope, and the envelope has no name. In order to the uh, Treasury Department can uh, release a receipt, official receipt at the end of the year, we need the name. So uh, please go with Brother um, Elmer Galve at the back or somebody from the Treasury Department, give your name so they will register under your name or else it will go anonymous and, uh, and the government of Canada is, is happy about that. So <laughs> but if you want your name be included at the end of the year in an official receipt, go, go, go to him and uh, he, he is going to register your name. So uh, we are in, at the end of our program. Uh, the Sabbath is not finished, it's just by the middle. So we are free from now on to go and worship our Lord. And, and Mother Nature is not raining outside, it's, not so, it's still clear or so. And uh, uh, if you go for a walk, just in case, bring an umbrella. 
and uh, and enjoy the Sabbath and let's get starting from now on. Get ready for the worship in the next two weeks. Uh, the same group, we will be back because the next week is the group number two that is going to be with us. So let's continue getting close to our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming this morning. Let's continue praising our Lord and have a happy Sabbath. To everyone that is uh, seeing us, uh, happy Sabbath to all of you. God bless you all. Happy Sabbath again.